Hello. I thought we'd do a, a video today uh, in Logic, kind of showing you how I do all my mixing, I guess you could say, even though it's two microphones and I do use a DAW. Uh, I'm using a DAW more like a summing mixer, really, just to bring all the analog microphones together. And then I send them out via the I.O. in Logic to all my outboard analog gear. So trying to keep it simple and as out of the box as I can. <laughs> but we'll start with uh, Logic here. So you'll notice I've got the two uh, ribbon mics. or It's just one ribbon mic, but two channels. So the left and the right. And they're down here grouped together uh, as an overhead. Um, that is a lie. They are going through, not the RPQ 500s, they're going through the API uh, 312 preamps. So there we go. But um, so we got the overhead and the kick drum is, oh my goodness, this is wrong too. It is not an AEA. It is a Steger SR1A. Amazing ribbon mic. Uh, so pretty big it's pretty beefy that's kind of acting like the kick drum and kind of like a room because it's a figure of eight my room shape it just kind of captures the front of the room really nice so we're using that uh, with the r88 and i'm panning the r88 right and left 37 and 38 so not super hard pan but i just kind of put my in-ears in and just pan till it kind of felt like i was looking down at the kit you can do whatever you want. Uh, but from there, you'll notice there are no plugins whatsoever. Uh, it's basically, you know, just being bussed to this drum master right here. And I'll turn the IO off so you can kind of get a sense of, of what it sounds like with nothing on it. And then we'll go from there. So here is, I kind of picked just a little warm up thing so you so you can get a, an idea of the kit but yeah here's the drum set with no nothing even no compression the eq is on but it's just a monitor and i have it on you know high quality so you can get a sense of what we're looking at here or what we're listening to <laughs> he's so fun all right here we go So it's not too crazy, it's pretty dull, kind of boring. Now, the drum set that I'm using, the cymbals, they're the Foundry Reserves by Meinl. They're very, very bright and clear and, and attacky and very sizzly, very nice. So I'm kind of countering that with that ribbon overhead. Ribbon microphones tend to just be kind of dull on the upper end of the frequency spectrum. Like around here, you really gotta boost, like you'll see like 2010, like for, for drums and most things with ribbon mics, you gotta add a lot of that air on the top end. They capture the low end great, um, especially for like the jazz sound that I'm going for. So the first stop on the signal chain is uh, our Fredenstein uh, EQ. It's kind of like the API 550 that we're going to use a little later on down the line. But you'll notice uh, I'm boosting it just at 20,000. And I'm it looks like around like 5 dB at 20K. And it's at a shelf. So it's basically boosting. It's kind of doing this, right? 20K. Uh, there we go around there so a lot we're putting in a lot of uh 20k so i'll just kind of hit play so you can hear it and then i'll turn on the eqs and you'll probably notice a big change in the frequency curve at the top end uh i am rolling off a little 400 um about 2 db there's no low end being taken away so just a little bit of mids at 400 and uh, around five at 20 as a shelf. So this is the Fredenstein 
EQ. Now I'm going out of the IO right here. So the microphones are going into the preamps, the preamps are coming into the Apogee Symphony and then into the DAW and then I'm taking them from the DAW back out the Symphony into my patch bay. So then we can route it through all this analog stuff. So the first stop on this is the Fredenstein. So here we go. So yeah, pretty, it's just really sizzly. Again, not really hitting specific frequencies like 5K or 10K for snare and cymbals or 200 to beef up anything. It's pretty much just adding some of that life to that overhead ribbon. Uh, and next up is compression. So this is the first time that we're gonna start to take all those big peaks uh, like you're seeing here on the snare hits, the kick drums like, it's such a beefy mic and it's I have it kind of tuned for jazz so I don't want it to be thudding like crazy it's just to kind of fill in what the ribbon's missing um, so really we're just trying to tame these snares and bring them down a little bit in the toms to bring out more tone <laughs> but still keep that attack but I don't want it to be like super overpowering. Plus I want the cymbals to really come through nice and clean. So bringing the snare down so we're getting more of that woodiness attack really allows like the snares, the, the cymbals, especially the ride to pop through and the hi-hat chicks. So yeah, here is, uh, again, this is all stereo because we're going stereo out. So we're hitting two Fredenstein 500 EQs, and now we're going into the the two warm audio uh, 76s, the WA 76s. It's a it's a clone of the 1176. I have it set to a ratio of four to one, and attack and release. Fat. I have the fastest release that I can go to, but attack looks to be about four ish so not too much and i'm taking away about two db i think three at the hardest the most uh on the meter so not too much but again i'm also using the 1176 to make sure that you know i'm staying in phase because once you leave uh, the daw you're and you're going into two different units as a stereo you got to make sure they're not going to line up perfectly. So you got to check your volumes and make sure that you're not going out of phase uh, or shifting phase. And that's what's neat about these EQs. You can see the two, the right and the left and see what it's doing. So I use the snare as kind of the main center point as my overhead. So as long as that snare volume is matching up, you'll see like the two EQ curves. The toms aren't going to because, again, it's stereo, so the toms are further away, and it's just not centered. But that snare is, so I use that snare as my gauge to really set the levels, and it usually usually works out for the most part. Uh, but I'll play it one more time with no compression, so just the, just the first EQ. Again, you can kind of see like those little peaks with the EQ or the snares around around like 200. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of gauging for volume. So now let's hear it with uh, the WA-76s by Warm Audio. All right, you'll notice I have to, I'm trying to match the volume here. 
on the master. So 1176 is the the input. Then you got to kind of change with the the output. Um, but I, I didn't want to go too hot into the next EQ and final bus compression that we're going to be doing. Uh, so next up is the well, well, quick rundown. So two Frankenstein EQs going into two WA-76s. So EQ compression. Compression is really just kind of taming those snares down a little bit to kind of bring up more tone, which will fine-tune some EQ now. And these are two API 550A EQs, so two outboard EQs, boosting four at 10. And it looks like we're boosting four at 100. So again, and no shelves, these are all just bells. So I don't want to be extreme with the high end and get that like sound that you hear in pretty much everyone's Instagram drum videos. <laughs> Stop doing that, please. Uh, iPhones love high frequency, so it just makes your phone go. Uh, and low frequencies, you know, I'm not close miking stuff, so I'm not going to be getting like real beefy, beefy attack sounds and stuff. So a lot of the low end will be lost in like a phone mix or something, but it's still kind of there and it still is present. So we're boosting a little bit at 100 for the toms and the kick drum and the body of the snare. Um, if I go to 200, you get a lot of like woody, just wonkiness. So if you stay at 100, you get kind of that tail of the snare, like in that low register. So that's what I'm trying to boost without making the toms weak. And I don't want to do a shelf because that's going to just really bring up all this mud and crap and, you know, the 20, 30, 40 range. So here it is with the API 550 EQs after the compression. Not bad. In all honesty, it sounds really good from there. We got some EQ compression. We're dealing with dynamics and our levels are good. Um, but just something to bring it kind of all together and not like a mastering effect, but the bus compressor, the G bus by Audioscape or the G Audioscape comp. I don't know what they call it, but it's amazing. I think you can get it for $7.99 or $8.99. It's insane for what it does if you're into the analog stuff. And it models the SSL G bus or that glue. Um, so I have this right now set to a four to one ratio again. Um, the attack is at three and the release is at 0.1. And we are using like the side chain thing. So it lets, it doesn't, it's not compressing the low end, which is, what I don't want to do. I just want to kind of tame all that high end mid range stuff and bring it all together and make it sound like a nice jazz drum, funky, I don't know, <laughs> just a good natural drum sound. And it does really well. So yeah, again, we're going through the Frankenstein EQs, WA76 compressors, Getting some more EQ with the API 550As, and now we're going into the Audioscape G bus. So I'll let you hear that. I should say we're doing about not even 4 dB of compression. So this isn't like going, it's just, it's, it's tickling it. It's just doing a little thing. And I am using the makeup gain to kind of regain some of that volume that we lost me just maybe like a db or two so here we go
go. So it it tames it. It's I know it's not super attacky, but I don't want it to be like you know just killing my ears when I'm practicing or when I'm streaming or people are watching. So this is a, it's just a nice calm mix that I think you can hear the ghost notes and everything pretty well. Uh, there is some reverb that I put on. Not a lot, but I'll let you hear that. So it's basically just the stock Logic, whatever reverb, <laughs> space designer, uh, two second tiled room. I, it's probably under medium spaces, indoor spaces, tiled room plus, ooh. I'll solo the reverb so you can hear it. You see, it's barely on at 30. My OCD's got to be good. <laughs> so I'll let you hear that and then uh, solo, and then I'll put it in the mix. So here it is. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> it's not super crazy, and it's nothing, you know. I'm sure I'll change the mix a million times today. But this is my recent kind of messing around with mixing and only working with two mics and really making sure the room and the kit and myself sound good. That's a huge part of this. It's not so much the gear. That's not going to make you any better or sound better, or the microphones. It definitely helps, but... If, if you've got a good sound at the source, it just makes playing with all this stuff a lot easier. So again, my approach is first, I've got a smaller, woody, very resonant room, and I'm using the ribbon mics to kind of tame some of that high energy, capture that warmth and low end. And the first pair of EQs, the Fredensteins, are really boosting that 20K, so that air, that sizzle, that's really lacking in the R88. And then just scooping out a little 400, that muddy frequency that's always just plaguing drums. Then we're going into uh, the first taste of compression with the 1176 from Warm Audio, WA76. And that's a 4 to 1 ratio, really fast relief. Uh, attack is at like 3, 4. After that, we're going into two API 550A EQs. So EQ, compression, and then polishing that new compressed sound and that's where that's when we do our boosting at 10k at 4 and at 100 so we're compressing that snare and then boosting it after compression really lets those cymbals shine through without the snare being just in your face and the low end too just kind of smooths out that low end that we're boosting after that compression from the the 76s and then finally, we go into the Audioscape G-Bus. Again, 4 to 1 ratio. A little bit of, you know, maybe 4 at a really high, really hot snare hit. Um, and a pretty slow attack and a pretty quick release. So it's, it's, it's just more to bring all that sound together and make it sound cohesive. So yeah, that's kind of been the audio setup for the stream and all the stuff you see from me pretty much on the internet in the past month or so so yeah if you have any questions or want to know more let me know have a great day we'll see you soon bye